As we all know, last spring, educators, students, and families were unexpectedly thrust into a situation where all learning had to take place online. I've long held the position that we should be seamlessly integrating technology into our curriculums to help build relevant 21st century skills with our students, but even for me, this was extreme. With only a week or two notice, there was simply no way that educators around the world were going to be able to successfully start using all of these new technology platforms to teach students. And that's not to say that we didn't try. I've seen so many educators dedicate themselves to learning new skills and figuring out ways to continue to reach students using technology tools. Last spring, it was understandable that using technology to teach students was pretty uneven and only moderately successful and in lots of places completely unsuccessful. But now as we face the almost certain reality that the majority of our students are going to be learning online yet again, I fear that schools have not done enough to prepare teachers to leverage technology to continue to provide students with a high quality education. Starting the year off online and potentially looking at an entire school year of doing distance learning is a significantly different situation than suddenly having to switch to online learning toward the end of the year. And the consequences of getting this wrong are real. Students face learning loss and significant disengagement from school that could continue to impact them well into their futures. This time we have to get it right, which means we need to come up with a strategic plan for how we are going to be using technology to teach our students. To me, this strategic plan means that we are essentially looking at our curriculums and figuring out how we can digitize it. And we also shouldn't just be using technology to replicate our current instructional practices. We should take advantage of the fact that we have such powerful tools at our disposal to learn new ways to reach our students and build upon our practices so that we can take those practices back to our classrooms to create more innovative spaces. As teachers, there's a lot in this situation that's out of control. We know that a massive barrier to students being able to access learning at all during this time is just basic access to a device and the internet. But notwithstanding those challenges, there is still a lot that's within our control. We can learn how to leverage technology to make our lessons more interactive and engaging. And we can learn how to use it to foster creativity in our students, to teach them 21st century skills, and to personalize learning for them so that they're receiving instruction that's at their just right level. And we can also learn new tech-infused instructional techniques that might even better help us reach our students. In the end, if teachers learn how to use technology tools in order to meet educational goals, as well as teach students how to build skills using technology, that will be a good thing for public education. So this time, let's go in with a plan and make sure we are leveraging technology to provide our students with the high quality education they deserve. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my name is Sam Carey, and I'm the founder of the New Ed Tech Classroom, a website and YouTube channel dedicated to helping teachers learn how to integrate technology into their curriculums. I've been a classroom teacher and instructional coach for the last decade, and I'm still in the classroom today. I decided to start the New Ed Tech Classroom because I always felt frustrated by the fact that it seemed like teachers always had to go out of their way to learn new instructional practices. Most teacher PD just didn't really do it for me. And I always had this feeling that if somebody could just show me how to do it, I could definitely be a much better teacher. It literally took me years of observing other teachers, reading books, attending conferences, and trial and error in my own classroom to figure all this stuff out. With a few exceptions, when it came to education technology in particular, the majority of the content out there was really just about how to use a program, but not about how to use that program with students. I still found myself spending hours figuring out how to bridge the gap between a new program I had been introduced to and how I would actually use it in my classroom. Sure, having students respond to each other via video or make podcast projects seem like cool ideas, but how does it actually fit into my curriculum? How do those programs help me achieve educational goals? And how do I actually deal with a room full of students all sitting in front of a computer recording themselves? I wanted to address those practical concerns while also showing teachers how technology could open up new and exciting possibilities in education. The truth is that before school closures, my channel was something that very few people paid attention to. 
Then around mid-March, I put out a few videos about how to strategically approach remote teaching, and that pretty much changed everything. Today, we're a rapidly growing audience of over 50,000 educators around the world, and I've led webinars in the US and abroad for hundreds of teachers to show them different techniques for how to use technology in strategic ways. I'm well aware that the success of this channel has absolutely nothing to do with me, and it has everything to do with the fact that teachers needed to find resources in order to adapt to this emergency distance learning situation that they all found themselves in. I am truly humble and appreciative that so many teachers around the world have found the content that I've been putting up helpful as we face this unprecedented situation. Now, I know so many educators are again feeling a sense of anxiety and concern about all the uncertainty that we're facing in this upcoming school year. I'm not here to tell you about a magical app or a quick fix that's suddenly going to make your teaching with technology more effective, but I am here to tell you that with the right strategic plan in place, you can continue to provide students with a high quality education using technology and even improve upon your instructional practices. These are all practices that you will be able to transfer back to a brick and mortar school. In all challenges, there are also opportunities to become stronger. And I urge everyone to use this challenge as an opportunity to also improve upon our instructional practices. I know that's what I'll be doing. I'm going to continue providing free resources through my YouTube channel and my blog to support teachers with strategically integrating technology. And I'm also excited to formally announce that shortly I'll be launching my first online course, the 21st Century Classroom. The course is designed to be a comprehensive look at how to strategically integrate technology in order to achieve meaningful outcomes with students. Not only will you learn how to create a classroom that could be implemented in person or online, you'll also learn how to leverage technology to personalize instruction, foster creativity, and provide students with authentic learning experiences. Since this is my first online course and I want to make sure that I do it right, I am only going to be accepting a limited number of students for this cohort. If all of this sounds like something you might be interested in, you can click on the link below to get your name on the early bird waitlist. Stay tuned for the next video because I'm going to be showing some specific strategies you can use in order to strategically integrate technology. That being said, I hope you're compelled to meet this historic moment in education with an innovative mindset. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments below or send me an email at newedtechclassroom at gmail.com. I can't wait to share what I have for you in the next video. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great week.